Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here, and this is a uh, video on scripture translation. And the question is, is should you translate scripture in isolation or in congruence with other scriptures? And really it goes back to the question, is the Bible one whole with one author as God, or was it written by men with their thought processes and their theological agendas? And so I've noticed that people like, okay, there'll be translations that come out. I'll just give you, for instance, in Isaiah 7, 14, they'll say a young woman shall be with child. And they say, well, you have to translate the scripture in isolation. Now, this will be conservative evangelicals telling me this, or even Pentecostals, conservative people, Pentecostals telling me this. And I'm like, well, now what do you do in the New Testament when in Greek, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, Matthew says, a virgin shall be with child. And the word virgin there is parthenos. And it means virgin, 100%. So obviously, the Holy Ghost in Matthew would know better than we would what Isaiah meant. And so it should be translated, predicated on the rest of Scripture, not in isolation. But I think we're just living in the end time where not only is knowledge increased, but error has increased and uh, evil men and seducers are waxing worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. People aren't fasting. People aren't praying. They're not trying to get the mind of God and an understanding and truth. And so they're just taking kind of poly parroting things. And I've seen this a lot in evangelical apologetics. What evangelical apologetics basically has devolved into is they're like, we're going to take every hypothesis that that atheist and agnostic and unbelievers and militant atheists have. And with the few corns and, and kernels of wheat we have left, we're still going to prove to you that Christianity is right. We're going to just say, yes, Genesis is wrong. Yes, archaeology is wrong. Yes, the Bible is full of errors. But Christianity is still right. Well, you know, error begets error. So when you take an erroneous position, evolution is correct, all of this, you're going to come out with erroneous conclusions. And so this is the first generation that I know of, particularly, that says the Bible's wrong. I mean, even the Catholic Church was saying the Vulgate is perfect. They were saying they had a perfect standard, that the Bible is wrong, but we're still right. I mean, I just don't, I think to the common world, I think to the Islamic community, the Hindu community, Buddhist community, the atheistic community, the secular community, materialist community, all of the other community, the consumerist community out there, they're just going to say, so you get up, it says preach the word, so preach a Bible that's full of errors every week, and but you can be like Ravi Zacharias and quote Chesterton and quote Muggeridge and quote Lewis and prove that Christianity is right semi-philosophically. I just don't think that's going to work. So, um, getting back to the subject of this video, translating the Bible, I don't think you can translate the Bible in isolation. I think you have to take the hundreds of times that the Old Testament, for instance, is quoted in the New Testament, you would have to take that as authoritative and that they know what they're talking about. And that the doctrines that are clear, since, and I, this is one reason I really appreciate the King James Version of the Bible. Because, you know, God, they were acting as God's secretaries, as they, somebody, Nicholson, has said about them. And I think they said about themselves as well. Maybe Selden said that in Table Talk or somewhere. But I think they, they were God's secretaries. That uh, since they knew the Bible did not contradict itself, they were doing it by faith. They knew this. Then they would translate and say, okay, it could be translated one of four ways because translations like that. But since we know the Bible does not have an error, we know it has to be translated this way. And it's a perfect translation in that way. So no, I don't think you can translate the Bible in isolation. And I mean, even conservatives, I was, you know, somebody commented on the, all Greek texts have errors in them. How do you know? What are you comparing it to? They said, well, the autographs. Oh, so show me the autographs. Well, and so it just gets into circular reasoning because they know they don't have the autographs. So uh, anyhow, 
No, the Bible cannot be translated in isolation. It has to be comparing Scripture with Scripture, just as doctrine does, and in the words that the Holy Ghost speaketh in 1 Corinthians 2, and should be done in humility and not as a scientific exercise. So God bless. I love you in Jesus' name.